Hi, thanks for checking out this video today. I'm Nicole with executedivision.com. The link is in the description to the site, or you can go to xecutethevision.com. And today's video is going to be about profit and loss or PL statements. So I'm going to share my screen and we're going to cover the basics. Um, so I'm getting to this by, again, you can find the link in the description or going to the site and then clicking on toolbox for readers and then scrolling to the how to review a profit and loss or PL statement. So let's jump right in. Let's say that your vision is to have a quick way to review how profitable your business is. And ideally you would have just one place to look. So what exactly is a profit and loss statement or PL? This is the solution to your vision problem. But let's just keep it easy. And as I go through this article, um, as, if you're following along written or the video, I'm going to just refer to it as a PL instead of profit and loss. But um, basically, this is a financial report that you may also hear called the income statement or a statement of operations. There's a few other names, but basically, it's going to quickly show you the revenue, expenses, and of course, your profit and losses over a specific time period. So it's set up with the main categories going down the left column and across the top, you're gonna to see uh, the time period. So it's most often in years if you're looking somewhere like Yahoo Finance, but it can be in months and quarters. So I'm gonna flip over to an example one real quick here. And as you'll see, your main columns are down the left and then time periods across the top. So why would you look at a PL? So aside from the fact that many to most businesses are required to have these, this type of report shows you how capable a business is of generating sales, managing their expenses and creating a profit. This is going to give you an idea of the health of a company. And if you're looking to get financing, for example, this is exactly what you're going to be asked for by a bank or a financial institution. So why is the PL different from all the other financial statements? It's, somewhere, it's somewhat similar to a statement of revenue, um, but those aren't as detailed as this is, and it often doesn't show net income and operating income split out. So more often the PL provides more of a total picture and it's preferred for banks and investors over others. So you are going to need all of the income statements. You know, this is just one piece to the puzzle as, as usual. But, you know, for example, balance sheets are important, um, but they're going to focus, you know, on debt, whereas the PL is really about the ability to make a profit. And essentially a PL is made up of these items. So it's basically revenue minus COGS, cost of goods sold, you can get your gross profit or loss, minus your overhead expenses to get your operating profit or loss, and then um, your interest expense removed and your tax expense to get your net profit um, or loss. So those are the basic components. And we'll go into a little more detail on some definitions in, in a second here. So how do you get started though? So in order to even start reviewing one of these, you do need to determine if you or the business you're reviewing is on a cash basis where revenue and expenses are noted or recognized each time cash moves or accrual method, which means that revenue is accounted for at the time of earning, but it's before it hits the bank. So essentially a cash basis is thought to be easier and it's right away, it's immediate. Um, accrual is assuming anticipated revenue and expense. So um, you can assume that it's going to hit, you're anticipating it because, you know, just following your logical business processes, um, you expect payment to come from your vendors or from your customers, whoever it may be. So accrual is the most common. Publicly traded companies do use this. Um, so if you're, you know, if you're looking at a larger business, it's likely going to be that method. Smaller businesses may find the cash method easier, but there is a drawback in that it can make a company look like it's healthier than it actually is. So what are you going to find on a PL? So let's go through some of the items and definitions for the ones that aren't very straightforward. You're, um, you know, if you look at somewhere like a um, Yahoo Finance, like I had mentioned, like a Walmart, Target, bigger companies, you know, you're going to see some additional line items or slight variations in the wording, but these are the basics. So we're going to start at the top with revenue, and that's, you know, also called income or sales. And if you are using the cash method, revenue is recorded at the time of payment. And if it's accrual, again, it's recorded at the time it's earned and payment may not have actually been received, but because of just how your uh, general business operations goes, you have all the reason in the world to excuse me, to expect that it is going to hit. So your operating income, this is going to be the money made from your main area of business. So if you have any additional side businesses uh, going on or side production within your main business, you wouldn't put that here. You're going to need to identify your operating expenses, which includes rent, travel, payroll, equipment, utilities, shipping, those types of things. And then from here, you're going to take your gross profit. You're going to subtract your operating expenses to get your operating income. So your cost of goods sold, these are all of the costs that relate directly to producing a product. So, you know, if you have people who are assembling a product, for example, on a line, 
that labor goes directly into it, the materials that go directly into production, those types of things will be included in your COGS. And then gross profit or gross income, this comes from subtracting the uh, COGS or uh, from the revenue, I should say. And then you've got your selling general administrative expenses. Um, these are often called also the operating expenses or overhead. These are basically all the costs that are outside of the ones that are direct for manufacturing. So you'd expect to see these costs uh, to, to market your product, to transport your product, to the, all the management costs, all those types of things. Sometimes it's legal accounting costs, basically everything that you're incurring that's not going directly into the product. Um, so these are not part of COGS because again, they're not directly related to production. So you can't really say that they're part of the cost of goods sold. So you could think of these costs as what it takes to maintain the day-to-day -day of your business, um, you know, also referred to as indirect costs. So interest and taxes, those are pretty straightforward, so we're not going to get into those. But then finally, your net income, this is the money that's going to be made after all expenses are removed from revenue. And if you see a low net income and yet expenses are high, that's going to signal a red flag to banks. So if you're following along in the article, I prefer Yahoo, Yahoo Finance, like I had mentioned. Uh, I find it very easy to read. So I did leave some examples in there um, of Walmart, Target, and Signet so that you could take a look at some samples. If you're not following along though, feel free to just Google Walmart income statement, Walmart P&L, and you'll get the same to pop up. So <clears throat> let's pop over here. So again, this is the Walmart example and you know all the things that mentioned in the article, the revenue, your costs to get to your gross profit, minus your operating expenses to get down to your, um, your net income. And so again, by each year going across the top. So here's your basics. They have some additionals, but uh, for the purpose of this art of this video and article, we're keeping it to the basics. So let's say you've looked at that now, you understand what it is, you've got the definitions kind of you know in your head, you know what you're looking at. What would you do with this next? So depending on whether you're reviewing one of these for you or your own business, you can start to dig into the various areas if it's not where you'd expect. If you're seeing trends going down year over year, month over month, whatever it might be. You know, you may end up finding that there's some room in the SGNA or the operating expenses where you need to make some adjustments. As an example, if you're seeing costs going up, but your gross profit um, is, uh, you know, staying the same, you know, you might want to start looking into where, you know, where can you actually dig in further to try to make some improvements. So the the second part of this here is you want to look at trends over the period of time. So you know, you want to see if the business is going in a positive direction. So let's use an example of a horizontal analysis. This is gonna be where you review the changes um, across again, year over year, month over month. And so you're gonna take a single line item and you're gonna analyze the percentage change, for example, year over year. So let's look uh, back at the Walmart example of 2018 to 2021. And let's just take a basic example. You can see that total revenue is at 500 here in 2018. It's steadily going up over 19, 20 and 21. So that definitely you know, looks like a, a huge um, improvement there. And then same with gross profit, you're starting around 126, 127, and there's a pretty steady increase year over year. Um, you can take any of these other examples. You, know, you can look down here at total expenses. You see that expenses are increasing year over year. So while your profit or your um, in revenue is going up, costs are increasing as well. So you might wanna dig into that a little bit further. So that kind of leads us down here then to a vertical analysis, or um, also called a common size analysis to check that percentage of expenses compared to revenue each year, just as an example. So you can apply this vertical analysis to any pieces in this, but we're just going to look at our um, costs compared to revenue because it's like, well, revenue is going up, but uh, how much are the costs going up? What is that actually costing us to get that? So let's look here. I broke out 2018, 19, 20, 21 and looked at the cost of revenue compared to the total revenue. So I just divided those out each year. So our cost of revenue is uh, 373 divided by the 500. And if we flip back over here, you'll see that it's at 74.6 and 18, and it's slowly going up 19, 20, and then it goes back down a tenth of a percent. So overall, it seems like it's starting to go back in a better direction into 2021, but 19 and 20 were up a bit. So again, this is a great way to look and see, you know, yes, revenue is going up, but what, what are the costs doing? And is there a way to go back to our vendors and suppliers and get better costs? Or you know, what can we do to improve that? And then finally here, we wanna just determine the overall health of the business. So your net profit or your bottom line is gonna be key. And so from here, you know, your business decisions are gonna be made on this. 
So I would love to hear comments if you find anything interesting when you're going through these sample uh, P&Ls and income statements, or if you have any additional tips or thoughts when you're reviewing your own, please leave them. I'd be happy to hear them. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, please like, share, subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future. And I hope you found some handy takeaways when you're looking at these statements in the future. So as usual, thanks for watching and have a great day.